St. Lucia has approximately 40 fully electric vehicles on island, and this is one of them. At the Ministry of Infrastructure, we find a 2016 Nissan Leaf being charged. It holds a 24 kilowatt battery and has an estimated driving range of 84 miles, enough to cover the island. We learn more about the charging process from Energy Officer Shulman Francis. You can charge your vehicle with um, three levels of charging, level one, two and three. Level one will be an ordinary three pin home adapter or a home charger you just plug in um, overnight, that's like eight hours charge. We also have a level two charger. Um, it will fully charge the vehicle in around three to four hours. And there's also available a level three charger. Um, this one will give you at least zero to 80% in like 20 to 40 minutes. Again, these ranges and these times depend on the battery size. Public charging facilities are available to consumers, says the energy officer. Public charging is available right here at the ministry um, on the disc airport. Um, we have two level two chargers. Each of them can charge two vehicles at the same time. So you can actually really charge four vehicles in any given time. Um, the utility company, that's Lustek, they have also installed four chargers around the island. We have in the north at the Rodney Bay. We have one in Soufre, Denry, and there's a fast charger that's a level three charger in Viewfort. A 2023 Consumer Reports electric vehicle survey reveals around 7 in 10 Americans would at least consider getting an EV eventually. In St. Lucia, the perception is different. Um, in St. Lucia, people are often afraid of the technology, electric vehicles, because they think it doesn't perform. Um, I can tell you this electric vehicle doesn't know the difference between a flat or a hill. Mr. Francis, who's the energy officer of the Ministry of Infrastructure, says this EV does not know the difference between a flat road and a hill. We are on a hill, and I'm about to test this theory. I'm actually decelerating right now. I'm pressing the brakes just to slow down. We're in here, I'm accelerating again. Because there's no difference at all. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. The performance by the Nissan EV did surprise me. We also caught up with a consumer that was blown away by the Leaf. I own a 2014 Nissan Leaf. I also have or had a 2014 Toyota RAV4. And I must tell you, I was saving about 60% on my transportation bill driving the EV versus the ICE car, right? So I decided to sell the RAV4. I only drive a Nissan Leaf right now and I can tell you it's amazing. Experts in electric vehicle maintenance and servicing are in St. Lucia to participate in an EV occupational standards validation workshop. Dampier Barnett and company are the facilitators of this initiative. So the standards have been developed by Dampier and we are now putting them back on the table for the practitioners to go through and to validate. When the validation process is completed, they will sign off to say, yes, these are approved standards for the region. Then they will go to Canter, where they will be again reviewed. And once they're approved at the Canter stage, they will go off to CARICOM for distribution, approval and distribution for the rest of the region. The St. Lucia TVET Council, a key stakeholder, supports this workshop. This, this exercise builds on what had transpired sometime I think in 2018 through the period of 2023, when a number of persons were trained by the Institute of Motoring Industry in the UK. Um, these persons, I think, n numbered in 15 of them. But at this point, this validation gives us the opportunity to increase the number of persons who can be trained in that area and be certified at the same time. These um, standards will become CVQ and available not only to St. Lucia, but to the rest of the region. The regional consultation is funded and supported by the University of the West Indies Mona, the German Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs, and the Climate Change Action. Marvin St. Louis, reporting.